Hello my friends, my name is Lindsay and I run the blog books for Christian girls and welcome to or welcome back to the little corner of the internet where I talk mainly about Christian fiction. Today is one of the best videos to make as a booktuber and that is my favorite books from the prior year and I have them organized into Christian fiction and clean fiction and then I also have some honorable mentions and some rereads and then just brand new favorite books that I've read in 2023 so let's just go ahead and get started I have quite a few and I'm really happy about that so yay! Just a quick note before we get excited and fangirling about all these books because you know fangirling is coming, I will have links to all of these reviews down below in the description. So if it's Christian fiction, it will be on my blog, BFCG, and if it's clean fiction, it's just going to be on Goodreads, but I will have all those linked below as well as the recent reads where I talked about all of these books and more details and about the plot and everything. I'll do the best I can. For right now but again I have a lot of books to go through for this video I don't even know how many this is actually I didn't count but I have honorable mentions as well so does that really count do those count I don't know but I will link those I do know there's a couple that aren't gonna be discussed till my next recent reads though which I'm hoping will be the next video after this I'm pretty sure I have that's what's planned so you might have to wait for a couple of them, but I'll also have them in a reading vlog. So, you know, it's all going to work out. I will link as much as I can in the description for y'all. To start off with honorable mentions for Christian fiction, I'm going to go with a trilogy, and that is The Secrets of the Canyon Trilogy by Kimberly Woodhouse. I gave each book four stars. I think 14, 15-year-old Lindsay would have just adored this series so much because the faith content was top-notch and the romances were super sweet and clean and it was just an overall really pleasant read. They're all set around that 1900s time period, which is my favorite time period, so that was also an added bonus. And let's see, book one is A Deep Divide, book two, A Gem of Truth, and then book three, A Mark of Grace. And they're all set around the Grand Canyon and I did lots of historical bunny trails of research after I read each one of these books because it was just so fascinating. Very sweet series, very clean, so much fun. What else can I say about it? I really enjoyed them. <laughs> if you're just looking for a sweet historical series that has very cute romances but great faith content, I would recommend these because I was super impressed by them. The next book for honorable mentions for Christian fiction would be The All-American by Susie fink -Beinert. This was my first book by this author and definitely not going to be my last because I loved the writing style. I loved the message of family importance in this book because we follow two sisters. The older sister is Bertha and this is set in the 1950s. Hence the awesome jacket on this cover and the hat. I love it so much. But the older daughter is Bertha and she loves baseball so very much and then Flossie is her younger sister. And and she is just something else. She is something else. I, just, I would be thoroughly entertained, I think, babysitting Flossie because she was something else. I just loved her dearly. She reads a lot and we have a lot of literature references. This book had such an importance on family and I loved reading that so much. I did cry at the ending because of certain events. I'm a little concerned reading the author's other books because that seems to be a thread I've heard that you typically will cry in her books. So. I'm still going to read them, but I'm going to have a box of tissues ready next to me as I read them. Another honorable mention would be Children of the Shadows by Erica Vitch. This is book three and the final book in the Thorndike and Swan Regency Mystery series. Since it's book three, I can't tell you too much, but I can tell you book one was the Debutantes Code, which I adored. Y'all have heard me talk about it for a couple of years now. And it has to do with Regency Mysteries, hence the series title. But the main girl finds out her family are spies. And then that gets a little tricky when the main guy, the love interest, is a basically a police officer. And, well, he's been assigned to figure out what's happening to these different events that her family may or may not be involved in. Lots of fun. Birth secrets are revealed. In the first book, things happen in the second book. The third book wrapped up quite well. I give it four stars. And I'm super, super duper excited that the author has shared that her next series is going to be about her uncle's. It's going to be her, his story and I'm, I'm thrilled. I am thrilled to pieces with that because I was reading as I read this trilogy and reread some of the books as well. I was like, he needs his own book. 
and he's getting his own book and I am very excited for that. I don't know when that's releasing. I assume it's probably not going to be 2024 because the author is currently writing it, but regardless, I'm looking forward to it. He needs his own book. I have some of her other books to read though in the meantime and I'm really excited about that. But yes, this was a really good trilogy. My next honorable mention is actually a Christmas book and that is Merry Humbug Christmas by Sandra G. Bricker. This title messes me up so much, but I'm trying to re I'm trying to get it right. I'm trying to get it right. But this is a novel that has two novellas in it that are connecting about two best friends. One of them is about Joss and she doesn't do Christmas. For multiple reasons, she doesn't do Christmas. And because her birthday is a Christmas, she always does some kind of fun trip with her best friend. Well, her best friend, who is the second book, she is great, Reese, she has to go on their cruise alone. And it was supposed to be a no Christmas at all cruise. That doesn't happen. And she ends up going on a 12 days of Christmas extravaganza cruise because the original one got canceled and there was details. So she is stuck on this cruise with lots of Christmas all over the place and it was just highly entertaining. The second novella is about her best friend Reese who is going to meet her fiance's family for the first time and I'm just saying if that was a movie, I think it could rival Home Alone for laughter because I was absolutely cracking up during both novellas but especially the second one. It was just so much fun. I have tabs all over this book. I think I might actually redo the tabs because I just received some pretty red ones. So I'll probably redo the tabs, but lots of tabs. Very, very entertaining read. I had this one on my list to read last year and I never got to it in 22, but I got to it this year and it's one of those books that's like, this gem has been sitting on my shelf for so long and I didn't know it. Like, I knew I would probably enjoy it, but I didn't realize how much I would enjoy it. It was thoroughly entertaining. Lots of fun. The cover cracks me up, by the way. I just, this, cr I laugh every time I see this cover. And then my final book for the honorable mentions category is actually a nonfiction book and the only nonfiction on this list because I don't really read much nonfiction. Sorry about that. If that's what you were here for, yeah, no, this is the rest of it's all going to be fiction. But the nonfiction book was Safe All Along by Katie Davis Majors. I love her writing style and this was her new book that released in 2023 and it's all about trading our fears and anxieties for God's unshakable peace. And uh, what a tagline. I learned so much. I was reminded of so much and it was just such, such a pleasant read and such a good one. I actually annotated it in an annotate with me video so y'all could watch that if you want to hear more of my in-depth thoughts but this was such such a good good book that I foresee myself reading rereading multiple times. The next category is my favorite Christian fiction rereads and I have two trilogies to talk about. I did reread a few more than I actually thought I read reread this year which I'll talk about that probably in another video, I think, of all of them and like did my thoughts and opinions change. But these were favorites originally and are still really good, still really enjoyed them. And so the first trilogy is the Paige Adler series by Aaron Mangum. <sighs> and Aaron Mangum, I just, I love Aaron Mangum's books so, so much. So these are incredibly easy favorite books for me. I love Paige so much. They're very almost slice of life, if you will, where it's just Paige going through her day to day, but then, then different things happen and it's got a ton of faith content and it's just so inspirational for, I think, young Christian girls. And even me, as I'm a I'm right about Paige's age, I think, if I remember her age correctly. And I just, I love reading about her and all her her faith growing and just the different things, a little bit of romance, lots of humor, just so much fun. So book one is Paige Torn, book two is Paige Rewritten, and page th uh, book three is Paige Turned. I love the titles. It's just so fun and creative, super humorous, great faith content. If you haven't read an Aaron Mangum book yet, I have failed. I have failed with all the videos on my channel. If you haven't, if you haven't read an Aaron Mangum yet, I have failed. And I'm so sad. So I hope you've read an Aaron Mangum books because her books are phenomenal. If you love Christian fiction and if you are a girl, let's say 14, 
to 28. Let's say that range. If you are anywhere in that age, I feel like it's a must read. Her books, just give a few of them a try. They are super fun, humorous, great faith content. I keep saying that, but it's true. So much good faith content. So you can read them if you're older, without a doubt, but her books are just great for that age and just so much fun. I adore this series. Would I say this is my favorite Aaron Mangum series? Ooh, would I say that? Why am I asking myself this question? Possibly, yes. I think it's either number one or number two. One or two. I do love her Carrington Springs trilogy, which I'm hoping to reread in 2024. I'm not sure which one's top two. I'll have to reread those to find out. But these are absolutely excellent. Truly enjoyed them. Loved rereading them and adding tabs. So, yay! My other trilogy that I reread this year and still really enjoyed is the Brides with Styles series by Janice Thompson. Janice Thompson, Aaron Mangum, my top two favorite authors. I talk about their books all the time. And it was really fun to reread this series because I haven't read them since they were each released. Like as they released, I read them when they re-released. So it's been quite a while. Book one is Every Bride Needs a Groom. Book two, Every Girl Gets Confused, and book three, Every Bride Has Her Day. And this is just a really fun and sweet series, good faith content, humorous. Our main girl is Katie, and she wins the dress of her, the wedding dress of her dreams on the day her longtime boyfriend breaks up with her. So what is she gonna do? And then there's the cute store owner's son, Oh, that's not correct. The store owner's cute son. Let's be grammatically correct. This, I'm sure this, I'm sure the store owner was cute in her own way too, but the son is the cute one. And he's there and it's just, it's so much fun. It's humorous. If you like the um, Gone with the Dogs mystery series by James Thompson and Kathleen Yabarbo, specifically the first book, Off the Chain, there's a lot of things that reminded me of that of those characters and that setting in this series. So if you really liked that first book, I would suggest checking out this series as well. No mystery, but really cute, really good. I recommend. And now, my favorite books of 2023 for Christian fiction. These aren't really in any order besides kind of how I read them. I'm just gonna go with that. They received anywhere from four to five stars. So four, 4.25, four and a half, 4.75, and five. I, I don't typically do those quarter stars, but this year there were just some that just fit that perfectly. So I have six books for this list and I'm very excited. Book one for this list, again, not really in any, like not ranked. I can't rank, I can't rank them y'all. I can't, I can't do that. But the first book to talk about today for my favorite books would be Wedding at Sea by Melissa Tagg. This is a chunker of a book, but it was so, so enjoyable. This is book three in a series that you definitely should read in order because you will see the thread of the mystery throughout the series. But this book I just enjoyed so much because it actually made me realize that, oh, maybe I can like Enemies to Lovers, because they weren't really enemies. They just antagonized each other to death and teased each other to death. So it was more that kind of thread than actual enemies or bullies or just mistreatment. It wasn't that. It was just them teasing. They've known each other forever. It also has the brother's best friend trope and it was just so much fun, so cute. I giggled. I don't think this actually would be my favorite of the series, I really liked book two, but I really, really liked the characters in this one, and it was just such a overall pleasant read. I would say high school age and up. It was just really good. There's the mystery thread throughout the whole trilogy. Definitely a series. Again, I'm gonna repeat. You need to read in order to fully appreciate that mystery, and it was just really good. There's a little bit of suspense. You have the mystery. You've got the teasing cuteness. It's just it was really enjoyable. I wasn't expecting to enjoy this book as much as I did, but I really did enjoy it. The next book for my favorites list of 2023 would be Countdown by Lynette Eason. I've been talking about this book almost every time I get a chance to talk about it. This series was just lovely. I think book two was still my favorite in the series, but this one would be probably number two. Yeah, definitely number two in the series for me, but it's actually book four. And so I would suggest reading them in order, but they are standalone 
books in a series, you will see mentions of characters and couples from the prior books, but you technically could read them out of order if you wanted to. I really just loved this book so much though because the main girl, Rainia, I'm going to pronounce her name, it could be Raina, Raina, Rainia, I'm not sure, but I just really liked her so much. I really, really appreciated the faith content that was within this book and her and the main guy's discussions. They felt like such a healthy relationship and I just loved a lot of aspects of that. It was a suspense book, so there is like, you know, a stalker and it has to do with a lot of different elements but I really, really enjoyed it. The next book from my favorite books of the year was The Cryptographer's Dilemma by Johnny Alexander, I believe is how you pronounce the author's name. And this book completely took me by surprise. Again, it's one of those ones I've had on my physical TBR staring at me and I didn't know what a gem it was. It was a hidden gem on my physical TBR. I had no idea that it was going to be this good, but I really enjoyed it. It's actually set during World War II, which World War II books aren't really my favorite type of time period to read about. It's just a really hard time period. Our main girl is actually a code breaker, and that was just so cool to see, like, the Morse code and all of that, and, like, she was such a smart cookie, and she gets roped in to help the FBI with the doll woman case, which, if you are familiar with history, you definitely ought to research that bunny trail. I definitely did bunny trails of research after finishing this book and finding out, oh, that was a true thing that happened in history here in the U.S. during World War II, and it was very fascinating to learn about. But I just thought this was so cute. The main guy is actually colorblind, and because of that, he wasn't able to enter the service. So he feels very stuck at the FBI, being what looks like an able-bodied man, but unable to serve his country the way he wants. And so he gets roped in to go with her all across the country on trains, which that was also just really cool, and find out what is happening, try to figure out who the doll woman is and who is leaking special secret secrets. The next book is The Lady of Lenaria by Michaela Bush. This is a Rapunzel retelling and by far my favorite Rapunzel retelling that I think I have ever read. The main guy he was very different from Flynn Rider because he was actually a guard for the palace. So very different, but there were still a lot of elements that reminded me of Tangled and like the best elements of Tangled were in this book. And then you've got other just reimaginings and just differences from the classic tale of Rapunzel and lots of really good faith content. And it's been a really interesting series. This is the only one so far that has a fairy tale retelling to it, but this book catalyzes Catalyst's domino effects of a lot of other events in this fa technically fantasy world, I guess you could say. It's non-magical fantasy, and I just enjoyed it so, so much. I was just blown away. I was like, wow, this is so good, and I really enjoyed it. And then for, I would say this is probably number two of all of my Christian fiction books, because I gave it 4.75 stars, and that would be To Spark a Match by Jen Toronto. I have read all of her books, and this might be, this just might be, my new favorite by her. Might just be. And typically it's the first book of the series by her that I really, really like. Like her debut book, adore that one. I think I'd have to reread that one to see, but I honestly would feel like this is possibly my new favorite book by this author. It was so much fun. It was humorous. It was also a little bit thicker than the rest, which I love that. But our main girl is Adelaide, and she's had five unsuccessful seasons on the marriage mark here in the early 1900s, I believe it was. Let me double check that. Oh, 1888. So right about that time period. I love that time period regardless. And she is kind of just... She thinks she's just going to be a spinster. She's got lots of cats. She loves to read. And she gets accidentally involved with a former intelligent agent, Gideon, and she is a nosy Nelly, and she wants to know what is he doing because he's being very suspicious. And I just really, really liked their banter, their, just their scenes together were just so cute. And then she's just determined to find out his secrets. And you would think being a secret service, not secret service, but like a government agent, he could find things out. But she may just help him solve cases. And it was thoroughly entertaining. I enjoyed it so much. I laughed so hard. It was just so much fun. 
it was so much fun. This is technically book two in a series, but it's one of those standalone series. So like you will see the main couple from the prior book, but it doesn't necessarily give too much spoilers from that book besides that fact. Actually, I'm going to take that back. There are certain scenes in book one that are mentioned in this book. So I suggest reading them both because they were thoroughly, they both were thoroughly fun. But this one was just so much fun. I just enjoyed it so much. I laughed so hard at it. It has to do with matchmaking, y'all, and that's just one of my buzzwords, and I just enjoyed it so, so much, so I would definitely recommend it because she is just a nosy Nelly, but so am I, so maybe it's because I related to her. Hmm things to think about and ponder for another day but it was so much fun I loved how bookish she was and she's always trying to find homes for cats she rescues and it was just so much fun really cute really enjoyed it looking forward to the rest of the series and my final book for my 2023 favorite books for Christian fiction category I'll talk about clean fiction in a minute but my favorite book from I would rank this one as number one I gave it five stars I enjoyed it so much I hugged the book when I finished it and that was Every Dog Has His Day by Janice Thompson. This is book five in the Gone to the Dogs mystery series and this has been such a good series. This series actually ended this year and I'm still sad about it but book five was so good and I just love this one I'm going to suggest read this one after you've read books one through four. You could read those out of order, I guess. I suppose you could do that if like you have to, but read this book at the end because we see somebody's wedding at the end of this book from the prior books in the series and I just, oh, it was so bittersweet, but I just enjoyed it so, so much just seeing all the characters and just seeing them all happy and healthy and I just, I loved that so much. But here's the thing, I don't like football. I don't do football at all. That's, that's easily my least favorite sport. But I do love Janice Thompson books. Like I've already discussed three of her books prior in this video. So I had to read it regardless. It's so much cute. Look at this cute little doxy. Oh, so cute. And so our main girl in this one is a groomer for the vet that this whole series really takes place at. And she finds a little doxy. And then here comes this new football player for the Houston Texans. Is that right? I should know that. But here he comes and he's like, oh, that's my dog. But he has no proof that that is his dog. So the media makes a mess out of it and it gets really crazy. But then mysteries and different events happen and it was just great. It's definitely a cozy mystery. Sweet romances. So, so much fun. So sad this series is over. But oh my goodness, it was a really, really good series. And there we go. Those are my favorite Christian fiction books that I read for the first time this year. Really, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied by this stack. Like, I look at all these books and I get really excited for them. And that is the best feeling. So, definitely recommend checking these out. I will have full content reviews down below if you want to make sure they are good for you or your reader. I list any potential triggers or content that may or may not be okay for you or your family. So please do check those out, but I really enjoyed them. Moving on into clean fiction, I have some honorable mentions and unfortunately I don't own two of them yet because I just read them right at the end of the year. So bummer for that, but I can hold up the rest of them. And the first honorable mention for clean fiction the Keeper of the Lost Cities series by Janet Messenger. I read all 10 books that are out, so that includes 8.5 this year within a couple of weeks, and I definitely fell down that rabbit hole. I got sucked into that world, and I really appreciated it for that reason. It's technically considered middle grade, which made it really easy for my not a super fantasy person to understand, but I personally would put it more as like, young young adult I don't know if I wouldn't give it to a middle grade reader personally but I read the whole series I was just like enthralled into the world it was a little addicting not gonna lie but it was a really fun time to read them all and I get the hype for the series now because they were very fun very creative super curious how the series gonna end I thought the series was going to end this past November 
but apparently the book got delayed so that's why I read them all thinking I'd be like oh yeah I can finish the series this is gonna be great well yeah that didn't happen so I am now waiting for that final book with everyone else who has read this series my other honorable mention would be Manor for Sale Baron Included by Esther Hatch this was a clean historical romance my mind is blanking as if it's Regency or Victorian I think is it Regents? I think it's Re it's Regency. It's Regency. That's right. It's Regency. I'm thinking of the other books in the series that are connecting. It's Regency. I have tabs all over this book because it was so it was so cute. Like there was times the romance was a little bit too much for my taste in the sense of like the kissing and the noticing, which I definitely felt that way with the second book in the series. But this one I just thought was so much fun because the main guy just falls head over heels for her and it was the cutest thing. I just, I love it when the guys fall fast and fall hard for the girl and the girl's just like, why are you hanging around me? And it's just, it's very humorous. He has to list his manor for sale. And when he sees that she is interested in it, she, he just instantly starts thinking, oh, she's beautiful and smart. And if we get married, we'll live happily ever after in my manor. And he just goes with that of wooing her and just their banter it was just so so cute i just giggled so hard so many times while reading this book it was thoroughly entertaining another honorable mention would be drafted by tommy michelle now i do feel like i should give the disclaimer that the main girl is a killer which is not really my thing so i ended up giving it three and a half stars but i'm putting it as an honorable mention on this list because i was just so invested into this world and i can easily tell you that had the rest of the books been out I would have binged them all within a weekend because I was just thoroughly invested in this world. I love a good dystopian book and this was a clean dystopian book so no faith content but no language and there actually really wasn't any romance either. I'm sure there will be in the future books but for this book there was none and our main girl is I can't pronounce the word, but based, not quite Robin Hood, but she's trying to find out what happened to her little sister who was abducted by the government. And she knows there's more going on than the average person is being told. And so there is a note that she does kill people in this book. So there's that. It was very bluntly written, so it was actually okay for me personally, but I would debate like every person's gonna have to find their threshold. Personally for me it was okay and I don't do violence a lot. So there's that. I did really enjoy this dystopian world though and I'm just very, I'm very curious about what's gonna happen. The book kind of ends on the cliffhanger and I need to know more and there was just a lot of different elements and I just, you know, clean dystopian I'm here for, Dysto Christian fiction dystopian I'm definitely here for and this was just very engaging so I really liked it. A clean, cozy fantasy I read and really enjoyed was Wormwood Abbey by Christina Bear. This book totally was like a wow, this cover is beautiful. And then I read the back cover and I was like, wow, that sounds really interesting. And then I read it and I was like, wow, I really enjoyed it. And I think this would be considered my first cozy fantasy book I've read. It's a shorter one. Book two is actually releasing here in January, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. But this is all about a girl named Edith, and she's actually a writer. And her father was kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Not exiled. Uh, outcasted from, it. what is the word? Outcasted from his family, basically. What did, I can't think of the word. But basically they shunned him when her parents got married. Her mother has now passed away. He is remarried. She has a younger brother. And they get summoned to her family, her father's family estate, which she's never been before. He has now uh, gotten the ownership of it because of deaths of other male family members. And so they have to go to Warmwood Abbey. And there's a lot of secrets at this place, including possible dragons and war warvins. I don't know how to pronounce that word. I'll put it here, but it's, it's like a dragon, but it's not a dragon. I'm a newer fantasy enjoyer, so I don't really know, but I do know I enjoyed this book and I'm really looking forward to continuing it. It was just a very, it was different. I loved the writing style though. The, what sold me about this book as I read it was a writing style that was just phenomenal. I just, I love this writing style. Uh, let's see, how can I give y'all a sneak peek of that? Mm, I, I can't really read y'all much of it because I feel like you need to read it 
in your own voice in your head kind of thing but it was really good I love this writing style definitely makes me excited for the rest of the series and yeah I really enjoyed it and then my other honorable mentions I don't own so we're just gonna have to talk about them by putting the covers on the screen and that is a thieving curse and the dragon prince's heart by Selena R. Gonzalez so I have been hearing about this book this series for quite a while and I get the hype I get the hype. I really truly do. A Thieving Curse though is the technical book one and it is about a girl who is a princess and she has been told that she's going to go marry this prince of another kingdom. Yeah, totally normal. Well, here's the thing. That prince is actually the cousin to the true prince that has been said to have been killed off. But when she accidentally gets apart from her traveling group to that other kingdom, Things happen and she gets rescued by the true crown prince who happens to be cursed to have dragon-like features and can turn into a dragon. So needless to say, she's a little like, what? And to be fair, I was a little like, what am I getting myself into when like he transforms into a dragon and like he's got wings and horns and a tail, like all that. I was kind of like, what did I just stumble myself into? But I did end up really enjoying this. And I don't, oh, how can I explain it without giving spoilers? Oh, I don't, okay, I can't say because I don't think I said it yet. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which worked so, so well for this. We actually really only get it from her point of view. So that's what the Dragon Prince's heart, that is the first third or so of the book, just in his perspective, which as soon as I finished A Thieving Curse, I instantly went and read this one, the companion book, because, <gasps> yes, I need to know. And, like, his his reasoning made a little bit more sense, like, clear on, and things happened, and it was so nice to see from his perspective on that. So, really enjoyed that one. But it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Oh, what else can I say? There is, we see a little bit of point of view perspectives from her brother, and they are a very close-knit bond that was just so, so sweet to see. I really loved seeing his point of view. He is actually the male lead in book three, which I still have to read book two. Book two is going to be about a character I really, really despised in this book. So I'm like, I want to read it. I'm going to read it. But it's just like, I, ha I kind of have to make myself read his story even though I've heard it's really really good and like we've got that redemption arc and everything anyway that's for book two I haven't read that one yet book one A Thieving Curse I really really enjoyed and it was just it was really good I thought what was the best part maybe maybe the best part of this book for me though was that I could completely visualize this book like a movie in my head and that doesn't always happen with every book Typically, I, I can get a general understanding and idea, but when I am so invested into a book and just cannot read fast enough, or and slash or, really, the author's writing style is just great for giving you details without overwhelming you and all the things like that, that's when I can visualize a book like a movie, and this book was so like that. It was really, really cool. I had super high hopes about this book because I have heard so many different friends just rave about it and I was like, oh, I really want to read it. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but the page count, because it is, it's almost 400 pages, which honestly, I just held up one of the Keepers of the Lost, Keeper of the Lost Cities series. I can't, I still can't get that title right. And those had up to like 800 pages, so I don't know what I was talking about, but A Thieving Curse really intimidated me for some reason because of the page count and I read it anyway had high hopes it met them quite well and so I'm definitely looking forward to reading the rest of the series it was just a really engaging really entertaining book I was not expecting that ending to be so dramatic I'm still a little scarred by the ending not gonna lie just a little bit but it was really good it was really good I really enjoyed it definitely need to get my hands on a copy I have Amazon gift cards for Christmas, and you know I'm ordering. You know I'm going to order it with that, so. And now, for my favorite books for clean fiction. Mmm, I just dropped them. Okay, and now my favorite books for clean fiction. I have a few. 
today to discuss and I'm very excited about them. The first ones I'm just going to do a bunch of them together because they are all in the same series and that is books 3, 4, 5, and 6 of The Accidental Cases of Emily Abbott. 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 I think it's Abbott. I need to remember that. I can't remember how to pronounce that last name. By Perry Elizabeth Kirkpatrick. This series has been so much fun. These are shorter books and they're completely bingeable. Apparently book eight though <laughs> ends in a really bad cliffhanger and book nine's not out yet so I had to really pull myself back from binging these. I binged four of them and wanted so bad to keep going. But I've been told that cliffhanger is really, really hard. So I'm holding off on book seven and book eight until the news about book nine is out. I'm waiting. But this is all about a girl named Emily. And she accidentally becomes a spy. Book one was Red Rover, Red Rover. And I enjoyed that one. But I honestly would say these later books have been my favorites of the series. Particularly, let's see, book three is Bad Things, Small Packages. I love these titles. Number four would probably be my favorite, and that was Tudor Nanny Spit Up Spy. Book five was A Spying We Will Go, and book six, Once Upon a Dime, and they just have different spy cases that she gets roped in on, and it's just so much fun. They're just so much fun, and I love that she is just so curious. Like, is being a spy like the movies? And the main guy is constantly telling her no. It's not like the movies, Emily. And he's constantly giving her cute little code names. I assume there's going to be romance later on in the series. <laughs> I hope. I'm going to be delusional if not. But it's really cute. So far, no romance. Clean fiction. A little bit of faith content here and there, but really enjoyable. Very bingeable. I have to wait to read the other two books. But I did really enjoy the ones I read. Oh. Okay, The Reluctant Godfather by Elizabeth Tebow is my next book, but this is actually a reread. So I guess I should have put this in its own category. Oops. Sorry about that. Totally forgot about that little detail that I've already read you. But it was almost like reading it for the first time because I did not remember the ending at all. And this is a retelling of Cinderella, but from the fairy godfather's point of view. And he doesn't want to be a godfather. He just, like, leave him alone, you humans, and let him bake. That is his mentality. And so he has two charges, a crown prince and then Ella. And he decides that, oh, if he puts them together, he's done. He's done, all right? He can go live out the rest of his days baking, and it will be great. But do things really go as planned? No. No, they do not. I had reread this one with every intent to finish out the series. And I didn't do that, but there's always 2024. So I'm going to... I might actually reread this one again. Because it was just so much fun, so entertaining, very humorous. He is so snarky and sarcastic, but I love him dearly. And it's just so much fun. Really enjoyed it. Just uh, really good. A very good twist to the Cinderella classic tale. So I recommend this one. And then my last book I'm going to talk about for clean fiction and just today in this video was a book that completely took me by surprise and that was The Legendary Ing. Inge? It's short for Ingrid. So Ing. I'm going to pronounce it Ing. We're going to do it that way. So like the first three letters of Ingrid maybe. Maybe we're going to go with that by Kate Straudling. This was the book early in this year that made me realize I can like fantasy books. And this really was the book that kind of spurred off all my fantasy reading this year, which I read like 50-something fantasy books this year. Out of 170 books, I read 50-something fantasy books. Like, who am I? I don't know. But I do know I had some really good successes, especially when you look at this list I just gave you a lot. Not quite half of them were fantasy, so that's really good. But this book, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, so our main girl is Ingrid. And one thing I really, really, I have tabs all over this book. But one thing I really liked is she has a very close-knit relationship with her siblings. She is the oldest or the second oldest of her family. And she didn't set out to become a monster slayer, but she kills this monster that all of the king's men have had such a hard time been unable to kill but she's able to kill it and so there goes the king's decree that whoever kills 
this monster that is plaguing their kingdom will become his son and marry the princess. Yeah, little problem there with that king, sir. Uh, she's a girl, and he just won't hear of it. So things happen. There is a brooding bodyguard that follows her around, and they were the best. And it was just thoroughly entertaining, thoroughly entertaining. I didn't realize I could enjoy a fantasy book this much, but then I read this one, I think it was back in March or April, and I realized, wow, I have a lot more fantasy books I want to read this year, and I read a lot because this book just spurned off that that excitement for fantasy books. This was just so much fun. It was so much fun. There is magic content, though, as a heads up, and I have all the details of that on my good YouTube review. I can't remember exactly the details of it right now, but I really, really enjoyed it obviously by all my tabs and then it's in this video I keep telling y'all I really enjoy these books obviously I enjoy these books this is my favorites books for 2023 of course I enjoyed it I'm trying to think what else I can tell y'all about this book because it was so good and I want y'all to read it if you like fantasy books and even if maybe you're like a newer fantasy reader I think you ought to give this one a try as well it's actually a retelling of the the legend I believe it is of Beowulf? Beowulf? I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. I wasn't familiar with it at all and that did not hinder any bit of my enjoyment obviously. There might be more kind of easter eggs if you know that that legend, that story, but I didn't and it was okay. So there you go. And those were my favorite clean fiction books of the year. And so for my stack of overall favorite books, both clean fiction and Christian fiction, let me try to hold them. The top ones are very slippery. There we go. Ta-da! That's a good stack of books. That is a good stack of books. So that is it for this video. Those were my favorite books of 2023 with three reads, honorable mentions, and then brand new favorite books. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you've read any of these. Do you want to read any of these? Do we have any similar favorite books? I would love, love, love to know in the comments or messages, however you want to reach out to me. Let's discuss these books. I love chatting with y'all, especially about really good books. That's kind of the best feeling ever. So I will see y'all in my next video. I believe it's going to be a recent reads where I will discuss a thieving curse and the dragon prince's heart in more depth, but I will see y'all then. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day and the start of your new year. I am Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls .blogspot.com where there's a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new video on this channel every Friday and I've been doing pretty good at it. Hopefully I can keep that up for the new year. I am also on Instagram and Goodreads and TikTok and all of those mini social media sites. So if you'd like to hear about even more books and add even more books to your TBR because we can always add more books to your TBR, feel free to check me out here, there, and everywhere. I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!